All right, it's your girl Sandra D, the main event, and welcome to my channel and my community of love and unity. We will not be talking about hair. We will not be talking about food. We are on this journey of speaking of the narcissist. I also want to say thank you so much to my community of love for coming and checking out the videos. I also want to thank you for those that you sent the videos to to help them in their time of need. I also want to sit here and also give a thanks to YouTube for allowing me to have this platform to be able to tell my story, but also to have a community where we can come together and we can empower, educate, and elevate one another to the next level. Now, if you have not subscribed, what are you waiting on? So today we are going to be talking about processing your process as you're healing from the toxic relationship with the narcissist. When you're going through your healing phase, you're going to feel all types of emotions, okay? The emotions that you're going to be feeling are going to change from day to day. Some days you're going to be feeling high. Some days you're going to be feeling low. And what I mean by that, you're going to be happy that the relationship is over. But you also are going to be crying because you're not understanding how you got in this process to begin with. But remember, this was not your fault. Okay, as I'm going to repeat this and I'm going to repeat it again. This relationship was not your fault. OK, it was a confirmation to let you know that you're on your you're destined for greatness. And this was a confirmation to take you up to your next level into your destiny. Now, when the narcissist came across your path, the, the narcissist knew that there was something special and great and awesome about you. Your light shine bright. What is in you shines on the outside and you're radiant. And it drew the narcissist. And the narcissist knew that there was no way that they could get into your good grace without deceiving you. Which is why they wore a mask in the first place. And why they deceived you by getting information from you by pretending that they were this great person. Because they did not want you to see them as the threat that they are to your destiny. So what they did was they asked you a whole lot of questions because they wanted to understand how you operate, how you move, what's your swag. They wanted to know all these things about you so that they can run their game on you. They know they know the length of a relationship that's going to work out and what's not going to work out. But they wanted to come across your path because they did not want you to succeed because a narcissist sees you as competition. You don't see nobody as competition because you're not on a competitional level. You're on that road of providing what you need to this world because God has given you a gift. And one of those gifts is not competing with somebody else to where you're going to because you're destined to get to where you're going to no matter what. Now, the narcissist did not want you to, to excel, did not want you to succeed, did not want you to reach the level of greatness that's already in you because the narcissist is insecure. The narcissist does not see themselves as being worthy this is why they're coming at you to attack you to try to belittle you to tear you down because they're wounded children that have been traumatized when they were little so they feel that they don't have anything to offer anyone so that they deceive people so that they can receive what you have that's greatness and then they're trying to make it their own OK, so what they did was they tried to weaken you and tried to control you through manipulation. Now, when you discovered that this was going on, when you did, when you stop overriding that gut feeling, when you stop overriding those red flags, when you stop shishing the Holy Spirit, when you recognize and realize that you had gotten off the path a little bit. This is when you discovered that, hey, something here isn't right. And you were absolutely correct. Because when a narcissist came into your life, they came into your life to deceive you. And when they deceived you, 
what they wind up doing was creating this fictional character that they performed on you. And during that process, the relationship went so fast that you didn't recognize and realize the threat that they were to your life. And also at the same time, how they were pouring poison, if you will, into your destiny. Okay, they gave you this love potion, you drank it up, and then they was rocking you to sleep, putting you into a trance, they hypnotized you so that you couldn't see what was happening. So when you get ready to come out of this relationship and your eyes are open and you realize something isn't right, this is when you realize you were scammed, you was duped, you was bamboozled. Okay, you realize it was Decepticon. You realize you was dealing with a demon, that you was dealing with one of Satan's workers. Okay, point blank and period. So once you're going through this healing process, you're feeling all types of emotions. You're feeling ashamed. You're feeling embarrassed because you're not understanding how did you get into this situation to begin with because you can you can spot BS a, a mile away. But when you're dealing with someone that's a fraud, someone that pretended to be something, this is something to where they did on purpose so that you can get your guard to come down so you wouldn't see them as a threat. So as you're going through your healing process, please process this and understand this and know this. This was not your fault. The narcissist does this because he's shift blaming and want you to take responsibility for the relationship, whatever type it was, not working out. But it takes two to tangle. Okay. No one person. Okay. Is going to sit over here and, and do that by themselves. You got to have another party for one. But two, that narcissist did that because he wanted you to take that blame because as a narcissist, as a child, they were traumatized. So as them being traumatized, they carry on that guilt and that shame. So what they did was they shift blamed it on you so that they wouldn't have the responsibility of the relationship not working out. And they also use that as a tactic. So later on, as you healed and you get better, they're going to try to come and have you open up your heart, your door, pull in the strings of your heartstrings in order for them to try to come in and manipulate and do it all over again. So what you need to do as you're going through your healing process is what you need to do is journal. Write down your experience, what happened and how you feel. Because you got to get that poison up out of you. You got to get that toxicity up out of you. You got to release what that narcissist had put in you because that's not a part of your destiny. You are not miserable. You are not a defeated foe. You are victorious. You are not a victim, but you were victimized. And how you're going to heal from that? Journal. Make sure you journal. Okay? Write down how you feel. What happened? And it's okay to be honest. And don't hold back. Okay? Because you got to get that out your system. The second thing that you can do is you can absolutely blog about your experience. Okay? As you're blogging, you know you're going to have to be a little discreet on how you do certain things because you just can't go out there cussing on your blog. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not for that. But you do want to be able to put out what had happened because you're going to be an instrument that's going to help somebody else get over to the other side. You can also write a letter, okay? To the narcissist, but you do not mail it. Now here, if you feel like you just need to get everything off your chest and you cussing them out, by all means, it's your prerogative. You can, but you're not going to mail it. Because that's not for the narcissist, that's for you. Because sometimes these narcissists will be playing games to where they're not going to give you that opportunity to do that because all they're going to do is shift blame. 
but you can get your closer by writing a letter and then make sure when you finish, you write, I forgive you. But remember, you forgiving the narcissist doesn't make them right. It makes you free from that negativity that they tried to place in your life. It doesn't matter how many times you got to write that letter. If you got to write a hundred, write them. If you boohooing, if you crying, do it. Because you got to get all that stank off of you that was caused to you by the narcissist. The next thing that you can do is you can have a funeral. Okay, whatever they gave you, you can put it in a box, do a little goodbye letter, do a goodbye song, and then you go on about your business. And then you can bury it because at the end of the day, the relationship is dead and you don't need to carry dead weight. So what you going to do, you're going to release it and you're going to bury it because it's no point of no return for the narcissist because enough is enough is enough. Okay. The next thing that you can do is you can start yourself a channel, start yourself a narcissist, a narcissist, uh, column you know, on your channel, talk about your story because there's a lot of people out here that need help. And even though that there are other people who have channels, ain't no channel going to be like your channel. Nobody can tell your story like you can tell your story. Just make sure that you're able to communicate what it is that you want the people to know. And what they need to learn so that they're educated and you're helping them to get to the other side. The next thing you can do is you can start a community on Facebook, Instagram, any social media that you like. But make sure that you have a community because there's a lot of people who need help and a lot of people who need to be reached. And you could be that one extension that can touch many lives. Okay? You can also watch you some comedies, some funny movies, because this is going to help you to be able to laugh. Because when you're going through this experience, you know it's very hurtful, okay? But you need something that's going to put your mind frame instead of hurt into laughter, okay? Because laughter is a beautiful and wonderful thing. You may not feel like laughing in the beginning, but pretty soon you will. Another thing that you can do is you can cry it all out. Okay, just sit and take you some time and just cry. It doesn't make you weak because you're crying. Because like I said, you're getting all of that toxin out of you that that narcissist sat over there and thought that he was going, he or she was going to leave you in a state of just being sad. Nah, you're going to get that out your out your system and I don't care if you got on makeup and it's and, and it's coming down your face it's okay because you're gonna have those moments of ugly crying to where you're gonna have on your makeup and this is gonna come all down your face that's okay you need to get that out your system do not hold on to that and and think that you're just uh pressing it down so you can forget it no you got to get it out your system Okay, the next thing that you can do, you can actually write yourself a poem. Okay, write a poem to that narcissist. I don't care. Rhyme it. If you want to write you a rap, you want you want to put some music to it. You got to do what you got to do, because at the end of the day, this is your life and not the narcissist. The next thing that you want to do is you want to get you a sheet of paper and you want to write down your dreams. Write down your dreams, things that you've been wanting to do that you put off and then put a plan in motion to get it done. Okay, these are some of the things that you will want to do. Now, how long is it going to take the process? It's going to be different because no narcissist relationship is the same. It's different on different levels because you got different types of narcissists. You got some narcissists that when they know they, they cover has been blown, they move on. But then you have some narcissists, they want to sit over here and try to make you have a relationship with them. And it's still going to be a no. It's still going to be, uh-uh. It's still going to be, I'm cool off that. No, thank you. 
They will have their flying monkeys. They will have a community of stalkers stalking you, making a report to the narcissist. But I don't care how much time goes on, you cannot allow that narcissist to come back because that narcissist is a lie and the truth ain't in them at all. And you don't have time for the opie doke. So I don't care how many times they try to hoover, don't answer. Because all it is is stalking. All they want to do is pull on your heartstrings. And you ain't got time for that. Why you got time for an enemy? It's not your friend. I told you. Just because somebody is friendly does not make you make them your friend. Now, the next thing you need to do is take a deep look within yourself. Okay? You need to check with yourself to see where were you during that time frame when you met the narcissist. Okay? Do you have any unaddressed wounds that you have not properly healed from? Because there's value on both sides of the parameter. That A, that narcissist came because they saw that you were destined for greatness. But the other side of that is you need to recognize in your own self, even though you were deceived, what was going on when you allowed this person in? Do you have any unaddressed childhood hurts? Do you have any situations in your life to where you rushed into this situation? Why did you allow the narcissist to rush? Why did you allow the narcissist to be able to control the situation when it takes two people to be in a relationship? How was that narcissist able to try to pull the wool over your eyes? What state were you in during that time? Were you lonely? Okay, uh, or it wasn't your whole and it was no issue, no problem. You just point blank, just didn't see it. Just make sure that you are checking not just what the narcissist did to you, but how you allowed yourself to be open. Because you got to remember, you cannot sit here and tell people your life story that you don't know. And it takes time to get to know someone. And sometimes you don't know a person at all. But do not rush to give your information. And if you do not want to do something, no is knowing. I don't care how they throw a fit. Because at the end of the day, that's them being childish and not you. You're mature. You're the adult. A narcissist is no one except for somebody who has low self-esteem who is broken, who has not properly healed and won't do the work to get to the other side of healing. All they wanted to do was use you to try to make up for some trauma that happened to their lives when they were a kid. And how are you going to sit over here and make somebody pay for something that they didn't do? That narcissist does not have control over you. You control you. The narcissist does not have control over you. You have control. So recognize and realize that these are some of the things that you're going to need for you. And by all means, pray. You need to pray and ask God to help you. Lean on God. He don't mind you leaning on him. God so loved the world that he died. Okay, he gave his only son to die for us so you can lean on Jesus. You don't have to go through this alone. You can go see a therapist or a counselor. You could talk to your pastor. You could talk to a close friend. These are just some of the things and tools that you can use to help you. And by all means, make sure you get educated. You are welcome here to get educated, but I'm going to tell you like I've been saying, you got the freshman, the sophomore, the junior, and the senior course. 
and I'm going to give you all that I have, but there are other channels that are good channels that's going to give you even further information because I haven't been through some of the scenarios that some of you guys have been through. And even though I can offer you some help and even though I can give you some education, somebody that's been through your exact situation is going to be able to help you even further than I can. So I have absolutely positively no problems with you going to go seek help on other channels because at the end of the day aren't we here to educate and uplift and empower one another and if we're not sitting over here doing it then we don't need to have a channel i will never sit here and tell you that my channel is the only channel that you should get yourself educated from not at all because just like when you're in school you got more than one teacher more than one professor and you're going to need more than one person to be able to help you to get to the other side. And even though I have a community here that's good, that gets involved, that believes in giving you some information that's going to help you. I'm also big on making sure you get the whole picture. So I'm not going to be here and be one to stop your growth. No, I'm encouraging you to up your game, to up your level. I'm going to always tell you, get your freshman, get your sophomore, get your junior, and get your senior. I am not going to hold you back from your destiny. If anything, baby, I'm going to push you forward and towards it because I know I got that gift to do so. I'm not worried about numbers, likes, and clicks. What's important is that not only am I able to share my story What's important to me is making sure also that you're educated, but that you get in a full course meal. You need it all, baby. All. So to anybody that got a problem with me saying it, this is my channel. And if you don't like it, leave. But also at the same time, you'll be back because ain't nobody going to be real like that with you like I am. Because I want you to win. Because you're destined for greatness. And I'll see you. In the next video.